in my practice, uh, I see people come to me all the time on an, a variety of medications. I would say the average is four to five. Um, the most that I've personally taken someone in was 11 um, at the same time. And, you know, I actually had a copy of their VA um, record. And so I saw their current medications. They were on 11. Um, nine of them were psychiatric medications. Two of them were um, opioid painkillers, um, two different ones. And um, that person is now medication free. I will, you know, I want to make sure I underline that um, and, and living a normal life without any of that stuff. But um, when that person came into my office, they couldn't negotiate the door frame. Um, it was absolutely, it was just sad to see. You know, they came in, they hit the one side and kind of toddled over and hit the other side. And they went into my office and sat down in the chair. And, you know, I looked at him very suspiciously and I said, How did you get here? And this guy got all indignant and said, I drove. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> like, I don't even know what to do when this interview is over. Like, can I let you leave? You know, is that even legal? You know, it, crazy. But um, that was that was probably the, um, you know, the, the 11 was the worst. But it's, you know, six, seven, eight, I see, and average is about five. And um, people are very incapacitated. They know they're incapacitated, but the mythology is that it's this underlying mental illness that's incapacitating them when, in fact, it's the medications and when you peel those back carefully, you know, taper them back over time, the person um, actually returns to their, you know, their normal self. And it eventually becomes even apparent to them that their drug was their problem. All you have to do is get out the package insert and read that thing. You know, it, it, I, it, this is not new and it's not news. They're, they are being harmed and it's clearly delineated on that package insert as a, as a starting point. Um, and then you go look at, um, the work of ISIP, you look at Cohen and Bregan, you look at um, uh, what Grace Jackson is doing, and you see everything from you know short-term uh, impacts like suicidal ideation to long-term impacts like uh, dementia. And um, then you, you take those things and you put them against the risk-benefit ratio, and you ask yourself, okay, if I take this drug, you know, and I, I'm less anxious, but I could end up dead or less anxious and dementia, you know, there's no, there, this, doesn't, this doesn't pass the test of risk benefit. You know, nobody ever died of being a little anxious. Nobody ever died of their nightmares. Nobody ever died of um, their memories. But, you know, people die from these drugs every day. And, and again, it's right there on the package insert, you know, that, that some of the drugs that they give out and say this is gonna help your post-traumatic stress, nightmares, anxiety, depression, um, under the side effects, it clearly says this drug causes nightmares, anxiety, depression, suicide. Mm -hmm.